well hello there and welcome to the channel with me your host Simon your budget Monty Don and in this video I'm gonna be asking the question is there a hardy bird of paradise that you can grow outside in your garden right here in the UK now there's a question for you and to be honest with you I actually do have a pretty good answer for you but do you know what Strelitzia that's an odd name where did that come from well I will tell you well Strelitzia was named by Sir Joseph Banks yeah, I really love flowers president of the Royal Society not that I ever saw that job advertised in Horticulture Week and he named it in honour of Queen Charlotte formerly known as Charlotte Mecklenburg Strelitz. Oh, German. <coughs> well, that was unnecessary. And in fact, the most common of all the bird of paradise plants that you'll see planted all over the Mediterranean is Strelitzia regina, regina itself, meaning queen. So it's called, queen, effectively, Queen uh, Charlotte Strelitz. Okay, now there are five species within the Strelitzia genus and there's one subspecies. That one subspecies uh, is going to be very interesting later on. But to start off with, we are going to be talking about Strelitzia, Strelitzia regina, the most common, the most popular and arguably the most attractive of all the uh, Strelitzia species and, uh, and talk about just how hardy it is in reality. Because if you check through the books, you check through the, uh, the internet and the, uh, the world wide web of lies, then it will tell you that it can only grow down to about 10 degrees Celsius which is you know that is quite mild but is it true well it's true that it will stop growing effectively it's not going to push out any more leaves it will just sort of stop there but that doesn't mean it won't survive lower and it will survive much much lower in so far as I've grown Strelitzia regina outside in my garden in London for several years and uh, I'll be honest with you it looked like a big sack of poop uh, by the uh, the spring but it always come back started growing up new leaves um, but it's not something that I would really recommend now during those times you know and you would put down a dry mulch around the root system and you would put down some frost protection over it and for a short period of time your strelitzer could take <laughs> minus one maybe without suffering any effects but you know minus two you know especially prolonged you're gonna start getting leaf damage now Damage and dying are two different things, you know. So what do you do if you want to grow it outside all year round and have it at its best? Well, to start off with, you want to stay or live in part of the UK that actually is fairly mild. The best place is going to be the Scilly Isles, but after that, you've got the, uh, the western coast of Scotland, which is a bit risky. You've got the Southern Ireland and you've got the south coast of the UK. Anywhere outside of that, I wouldn't even bother. I would grow it in a pot. Now, before we talk about growing Strelitzia in pots, if you absolutely positively have to grow a Strelitzia in the ground because you are determined to show how clever you are, then this is what you need. You need an extremely well-drained soil. You need a rain shadow. You need uh, a, uh, a south-facing wall. You need it in full sun all the time. If you can achieve all those things and then mulch it and then protect it in the winter and you live in places like central London, which is a heat island on the very mild south coast of England then you can probably get away with growing Strelitzia outside in the UK anyway I won't go into that any further because really the best way to do it is to grow it in a pot and this is how you do that when you grow Strelitzia in a pot you need to grow it in a big pot and the reason why you need to grow it in a big pot is because they don't like being repotted every time you repot it you delay flowering by one to two years so when you buy one it'll be in a <laughs> in a piddly little three litre pot uh, and it won't be ready to flower so what you need to do is be brave buy a big pot buy a big load of uh, compost add uh, horticultural grit horticultural sand put on a good load of gravel at the bottom because again uh, free draining compost is absolutely key when growing strelitzia and once you've got it potted on if you bought it from a shop where it was inside the shop then it needs to be hardened off to being grown outside uh, that will take about a week uh, 10 days 
10 days to a fortnight too hard enough and you do that by starting off by putting it outside but in shade all day and then bit by bit every day you move it so it gets a little bit more sun but I'm not talking about full midday sun I'm talking about early morning sun uh, late evening sun and then you build it up you build it up and over the time of 10 days to two weeks then it will harden off to coping with the full might of the sun so once you've done that and uh, there's I mean you do that obviously after assuming there's no threat of frost because of the winter so really at the end of the spring so you could be licking as late as June harden it off get it outside put it in full sun put it against a uh, south facing wall because you get the heat of the sun on that wall also emanating back out at night and you can leave it there you can leave it there all year and it will take a lot of feeding technical difficulties what the flip technology just getting old anyway so it will take plenty of uh, fertilizer and plenty of watering over the summer but then come the winter as soon as temperatures start to go down to about 10 degrees so always check your overnight temperatures too because that that, that also includes 10 degrees then uh, it's kind of it's kind of metabolism is going to slow down it's going to stop growing so from that point on you can just leave it out there which is absolutely fine but when uh, temperatures get to um like i say once they get to about zero you want to look at putting down uh, some uh, frost protection i mean really zero is a bit too low um probably four degrees whenever there's a risk of frost any temperature below four degrees you can get that frost so always keep an eye on your overnight temperatures so once you've got your protection on it you can either leave it outside or really i would bring it into the greenhouse if you've got a greenhouse that is because um you might find at that time of year if it's an established plant been in the pot for a couple of years you may well find it's shot out a, a load of um a load of sort of size shoots that may look like uh new leaf you know like, like new leaf spears but actually there are flowering spears and those flowering spears will definitely need to be protected if you want your plant to flower next uh late spring so if you've got new growth on it put it in a greenhouse and it'll be there absolutely fine you know and it'll take temperatures down to about minus one minus two in there but really if it's looking pretty and you absolutely want to make sure you get this flowering for the uh, for the following year then bring it into a conservatory bring it somewhere where temperatures do not dip below six seven eight degrees centigrade um what else do you need to know uh, yes, I mentioned about a subspecies. Now, there was a subspecies uh, found in the Eastern Cape in 2002, and it was quite unusual. It had uh, very uh, uh, thin leaves, or like reed-like foliage, uh, the same sort of uh, flower, but um, it, was, it was found to be uh, much more tolerant to uh, drought conditions. And the thing we know about plants is that the, the plants that are adapted to survive uh, very cold conditions have very similar uh, systems in place to help that plants use to protect themselves against very hot conditions. So what we find is when we have something that could possibly be a hybrid, you tend to get hybrid vigour. Um, those plants tend to uh, express that vigour in being a little bit more cold hardy. So would a subspecies that has uh, evolved slightly different to become, again, we know this Juncea uh, subspecies is more uh, tolerant to drought so therefore we can pretty much uh, believe that it's going to be more tolerant to cold but the problem is there are very few of them about. Strelitzes are quite difficult to get seed to, uh, to, to your viable seed from them um, so they're often propagated by like side shoots from the bay so if you haven't got a lot of these juncies about in cultivation then you're not going to be able to, to propagate an awful lot of more um, plants from it. So the problem is, yes, if you can get hold of this uh, Juncea uh, sub subspecies, then you're on to a winner because this will be even, we we'll expect this to be even more cold tolerant than the general Astralitia regina. But the problem is, who's got one? I've not seen it to buy. Anyway, if you've got anything to add, then we'd love to hear from you. Just put what you want to say in the comments. And if you've got a, uh, a species of Strelitzia that you know is even tougher and does extremely well outside in the cold and in the wet, then let us know, put it in the comments. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>